new job. Yes, I have a new job. I'm now working very close to artists. So in a way, I'm back where I once began. But what is a new job? Uh, what is working with the artists? Well, I produce works in close dialogue directly with artists, not uh, so much in connection to big institutional shows and not uh, thinking so much about where they will be shown or how to fund them. Actually, it's about imagination. But what, do, what is new about it? For me, it's new because it's mainly about new technologies, um, uh, artificial intelligence, AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, mixed reality, and other such things. Virtual reality. Virtual reality is um, a relatively new technology. Um, someone said it's a dangerous technology or a new medium, um, which triggers lots of um, sublime things, but also there are great possibilities for kitsch. It's um, a vulgar technology because it looks kind of ugly still. The headsets, all the gadgets are unappealing, um, but I think it's about lending enchantment to vulgar materials. I mean, I, that's a quote from Mark Lecke. He quoted yes. a show that actually it's from Apollinaire, I think. Wow. But uh, um, um, Mark is someone that I'm working with, and I think Mark will do a great piece in this new technology. And who are you working with, other than Mark Lecke? Oh, I work with many people, uh, and we are in conversation without having started to produce. We don't want to do things that you know turn out not to be. Uh, meaningful, but we're working with Koo Jong Ah, and we're working with Bjarne and Melgard, and we're working with uh, um, with Mark, and we have conversations with lots of people, including Thomas Sarasen and many people I worked with before. Virtual conversation? Not virtual conversations, very real conversations, actually. Reality. Reality is richer than maybe we think. There's so many labyrinth-like uh, paths to explore. I don't think that the uh, virtual possibilities are unreal. I think they're very, very real and they're part of our everyday life. Uh, many years ago, there started to be technologies around us and mass produced things. And at some point it started to enter the world of art. And I think these gadgets are now digital and virtual and, and, and uh, maybe a little bit immaterial, but uh, les immateriaux are around us and they're very real. Museum. Um, I love museums and I like to go to many kinds of museums and it took me many years to actually start working for a museum properly. Of course I did uh, short visits and I did uh, exhibitions and other things for small museums uh, and, and relatively big museums in Scandinavia and even the Pompidou in Paris. So I, I, I had some knowledge of museums but then Ten years ago, I became the director of a classical museum or modern, a modernist classical museum, not the biggest one, but almost a paradigmatic one, the Moderna Museum, that has a collection that starts exactly 1900 with the Munch and Matisse and Duchamp and Brancusi and goes all the way up to Cindy Sherman. Um, I've always been thinking that the museum should be elastic and, you know, a little bit maybe one as a contemporary cur curator fights the museum also. But I'm starting to think that the museum is under such pressure from the outside, new technologies, new financial possibilities for art that are a little bit outside of the classical public museum at least. So I'm more and more um, someone who wants to take care of the museum and support and kind of, uh, you know, give uh, strength to the museum. I it, think it's... Uh, it's not from the past. It's not from the past, but of course it could, in, in, in our contemporary, super fast uh, uh, um, media landscape, it can look a little bit like a obsolete device, a little bit like film started to become obsolete and then it became very attractive. I think the same thing is true for the museum. I love the museum. Lonely experience. Um, when you read a novel, you maybe are alone, but you don't feel alone. Uh, in, 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 on the contrary, you get to know other possibilities, other subjectivities, other forms of empathy and, and imagination. If you sit in a cinema, you're maybe not alone, you're maybe even holding someone's hand or eating popcorn together with someone, but actually the experience is something you have on your own. With these new technologies, AR and VR, uh, that's a big discussion because virtual reality is something that is, you know, seen uh, in a kind of, uh, with Googles, with some sort of glasses, and you don't have to be alone in there. 
there are actually social forms of VR already, but then the other people appear as avatars, and it's a, you know, it's something that um, is um, uh, full of possibilities, but also a little bit of a lonesome thing. I don't think that VR will ever lead to uh, art being experienced at home alone. I think we mm. like we, I say, the people in the art world that I know, the reason why we like it to go to a place where we're right now, the Venice Biennale, or to other exhibitions, maybe smaller ones, you can want to be alone in front of a painting, of course, but it's also the social aspect. We like conversations and symposiums and, and um, you know, the intersubjective communicative part of things. And we like maybe struggling and, and having conversations and fighting about art or parties and uh, events and, and, and um, cocktail parties and whatnot. <laughs> That's part of the art world. So I don't think virtual reality will change that. I think virtual reality might add another layer. Yes, but virtual reality is like your eyes are in a jail. Um, you can't look inside your pocket when you are looking at virtual reality. Um, that's what many people think. And we had a conversation uh, with Mark Lecky again. And in the audience, there were people who were very gloom, I mean, who were very negative and said, this is the end of everything. This is the death of art as a communicative kind of vehicle. And others who said, you have never been in a chat room in VR. It's fun in there. We do selfies of ourselves. We have huge parties in VR. So obviously it's a generational thing, partly. Of course, there are other forms. There are, there's AR that is, you know, we see on the phone and, and we are, you and I would be in the same room, but we can introduce a, a kind of imagine, a, a imaginative being between us. And we wouldn't really be able to say with our eyes if it's there or not, if it's just, you know, something that has been added with a new, in a new register. Or, um, and that's, you know, that's VR, or that's AR, and there are mixed forms where we will be in our common world and we will uh. introduce other layers. So I think in the future they will all blend and and it will be a confusing thing maybe and um, Bertolt Brecht said you know why start with the good old things when you can also start with the bad new things I'm not saying all of these things are bad but it's part of our contemporary world and we should uh, you know we should uh, and take that challenge yes Marina Abramovic Marina is a friend of mine and someone I've been working with and I've known for many, many years. And we did the big retrospective that now travels all over Europe. It started in Stockholm, it went to Bonn in Germany, it went to many places and it will actually end in Serbia. We continued this conversation with the piece that Acute Art has produced. Um, it's called Rising and it's shown here in Venice um, uh, in next to the Canale Grande. Um, it's the Fire Center from Canada that, that, that hosts this work and it opens tonight. It's a great piece, it's a VR experiment and I think it's very interesting that artists who are known for you know, from other things, from being major practitioners in, in other disciplines, that they try this new medium. I think it's a successful and very challenging piece. So, but what do we, what do you see? Well, surprise, you see Marina Abramovic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't thing, want, you don't things want to remain say. the same. But she, you have to save Marina. I mean, you, you see her in a tank of water and the water is rising. And if you don't start saving the world, you will also kill Marina Abramovic. Wow. What is your next dream? My next dream is to find entirely new forms of art. And that's what I'm trying to explore right now. I trust artists' imagination. I don't have to find new artists, but I'm pretty sure that these new possibilities will take us into new landscapes. What would you like people to remember about you? Mm, I hope that they will remember me as a, as a generous person who wants others to have success and fun in life. And you? And well, how they remember me? No, as, you having su success and fun in life? I'm trying my best, yes. Merci.